let's see how to make our mod more compatible by adding custom tags to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom tags to Minecraft. Now, those are, of course, not the name tags. No, I'm speaking of the tags in the data folder. So we've previously seen those with the mineable tags and also with the neat X tool tags for our blocks, basically, to make them, well, properly drop their loot tables. And first of all, we're going to be making a class with which we're going to be able to reference certain tags inside of our code. So we're going to make this in the tutorial mod a package, right click new package called util and right in there, right click new Java class called the mod tags class. And then when we have this, I will show you how really cool it can be to also add some, well, other stuff here. So we're going to be going through this. So first of all, in the mod tags class, we're going to need the blocks class and we'll also need a public static class called the items class. So in our blocks class, what we're going to do is we're going to add the public static final the tags dot I optional named tag bracket. So the angled bracket with block. And this is going to be the dousing rod variables, which is going to be equal to, well, something we've not yet created. So let's just make this null for the time being, because what we're going to need is we're going to need two private methods. And that is going to be a private static tags. I optional of type block, right? Called tag. And this is going to be a, with a string name parameter, and this is going to return the block tags dot create optional with a new resource location of tutorial mod dot mod ID and then the name. All of this is, of course, once again, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository in individual gist as well. And we're going to copy over the actual method and we're going to also make a new method called forge tag. And now instead of passing in our mod ID, we're going to pass in forge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy both of those methods into the items class as well. Then we're just going to change this to item and then we're going to change this to item and then we're going to change this to item tags and then we're going to change this to item tags as well item tags there you go and now we can instead of making this null we can now make this a tag and this is going to be the dousing underscore rod underscore valuables making sure that this is written correctly because this is quite the name and well this tag can now be referenced inside of our mod inside of the code let's first of all actually add that tag so this would be under our namespace, right? Because the normal tag one adds stuff to our tutorial mod namespace. So in the data folder, tutorial mod, right click new directory called tags. And then inside of there, new directory called blocks. And then what I will do is I will copy over the JSON file. Once again, this is available to you in the description below, get a browser or individual gist as well. And this is of course not tutorial, but tutorial mod, that would be a fatal mistake. But you can see those are now all of the valuables that the dousing rod will be able to use. Now, how are we going to use this? This is probably very complicated. Actually, it is not. So in our dousing rod item, instead of having the, well, these things returned, right, sort of hard coded, what we're going to do is we're going to return mod tags dot blocks that dousing rod valuables dot contains, and then we're just going to pass in the block. And that's it. So this is actually how easy using this particular tag can be. It's really freaking useful. And in this case, it's just basically the perfect use case for this because, because then let's say our mod would be added to some mod pack. Of course, the dousing rod should also work for other ores in the mod pack. So then the mod pack creators can just add stuff to this tag and then all of the modded ores should also simply work. This is, this is like the power of tags. They're incredibly useful, incredibly incredibly cool in this case. And this is why I highly suggest, you know, using them where appropriate, of course. Now let's also take one look at a forge example. So this is going to be a public static final tags dot I optional name tag of item. And this is going to be the citrine gems. Now this is going to be equal to a forge tag and this is named gems slash citrine. Usually something where I will link something in the description below, a great resource for, well, some used forge tags. Now, if a different mod adds citrine as well, they should hopefully also have added this to the forge tag gems slash citrine, which will then make it possible for your, well, for them to be sort of interchangeable in the sense that, for example, in the recipes, what I could do now in the citrine block, for example, instead of making this an item, I can make this a tag 
in the forge namespace and i could say this is then gems slash citrine there you go so instead of taking our citrine gem item this is now going to take everything that is in the gems citrine tag so of course we haven't created this so let's just do this so in the data folder directory this is going to be forge and then inside of there we're going to make a new directory called tags and then inside of there we're going to make a new directory called items and then inside of there very important we're going to make another directory called the gems and then what i will just do is i will just copy over the needs iron tool method and we're going to call this the citrine there you go and then we're just going to change this to just be citrine now in our example here of course we will only have citrine available to make this block but in theory in mod packs if someone else if another mod developer has added their own citrine to this particular tag then they could also create our citrine block so this is really cool and just something to once again basically make the compatibility intercompatibility between mods just that bit a little bit better now one thing that is important is that this right here is not strictly necessary because this is of course called an i optional named tag so it's an optional tag and the actual classes here are not necessary to add stuff to tags. This here is just needed if you want to also reference the tags inside of the code. So for example, in this case, the dousing rod valuables, we have to reference them in the code somehow, right? We want to reference them in the, the is valuable block method. So of course, we do need this in that case. But that is actually all that we really need to do. So everything, once again, available to you, description below, GitHub repository, and individual gists as well. But for now, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. So let's first of all see. And the dousing rod still works exactly how we would expect it to. Let's just see if I can find something more interesting than just coal or copper ore. That's fine. Iron is fine. Maybe some deep slate. Oh, there it is. Some deep slate gold ore. So everything working great. And in theory, I should also be able to find this. So I should be... Yeah, tutorial mod citrine ore is also able to be found. And then let's just also add and see yes we can also craft the citrine block with our citrine still because of course we've added our citrine to the citrine tag now any other item i would add to it would then also work to be able to be crafted the citrine block so that is actually pretty freaking cool right and that is it for this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did i would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah 